Hello there, Observer from 17 once again, introducing you to my Batman Arkham City Hard Plus Difficulty video walkthrough. And this is Ascending Justice Tower. So this next room can be tackled in a bunch of different ways. And the best way I've found to do it is to just bash the Bat Claw when you jump across this area. And you'll notice I didn't jump then, I fell because Batman's an asshole sometimes and he decides to move like a fucking fridge and just fall. But you can glide out to this area. And as you as you're falling, you can just use your, or you can do this. You'll get you'll hit something though, and it'll all go to hell. Yeah, I didn't do that correctly, but I don't know why I'm messing out and trying all these different bloody ways of doing it. I should just jump, and I do just jump because that's the way I've always done it. And there is probably a pattern through this room, but this one works the best when I stop messing about with this fucking line gun. There we go. No, there you go. And as soon as you hit that, job's done. But there are numerous ways to do it. You can glide, you can use the, the line launcher. You can do whatever you want. There's a, there's a lot of ways of doing it. And there's a really, really good way to skip a fight. And it might have been one we've already done. Yeah, I think it is. But the, when you first go into the underground, and on my video I use the line launcher to glide into the group of people and fought them. If you use your back claw, you can go above them, you can spray some of the joker gel onto the floor, destroy the roof, and um, it will kill them all. And it's a really, really good way of making, uh, completely skipping that fight, and I, I just forgot, I just completely forgot that it was there. And uh, it's super useful, but... This is a familiar territory. There's the, the woman that was here last time we came. And um, this is the room full of dudes that is now heavily equipped with jammers and landmines and all sorts of bullshit. There's a load of snipers. And if you're wondering why I'm never using my disruptor to set the mines off, I don't have the upgrade. I didn't know how to do the, the mines, and I do now, but at the time, I just kind of ignored them. So the, the thing that I do in this room is, is the same thing I did in the last room. I use the gargoyles to do the inverted takedown because it's super powerful and super easy. And then I got onto a position where I can stand and I use the back claw to pull people off the balconies. It's a very effective strategy and it's a very simple strategy. And uh, I'm not going to talk too much about the gameplay because unless anything crops up that I need to tell you not to do or to do, there's, there's no real point in me, me whining on about something I've been talking about for the last 20 or so videos. So instead, we're going to talk about some, some old school Batman cartoon. And I say old school Batman cartoon, I mean the one in the early 90s, the animated series, the fucking awesome one with the guy who does the voice of Batman in this game, in that series. Same with Matt Hamill as Joker. Awesome series, loved it to bits. I can remember collecting the sticker book when I was younger, that's, that's how much I was obsessed with Batman. Shit's awesome. But it spawned a bunch of films, and I don't know if you ever saw them, but... If you're immediately dismissing them because you think cartoons are for children or you think, you know, the cartoon Batman wasn't that great because it wasn't aimed at a high enough adult, you know, audience, these films are. These films really are. Batman gets fucked up in them. Batman is cut. Batman is bleeding. There's, there's no cursing or anything, but it's a lot more severe than it's ever been in the series. And one of them's called Return of the Joker, which is absolutely brilliant. It's got a really good fight at the end between Batman and Joker in this like a, it's like a theme park and there's a section where they walk through this town and it's it's a miniature scale model town and obviously Batman's really big but Joker's using planes and toy aeroplanes to fly into him and they're cutting his arms and stuff and it's really brutal it's a super good film and the fun doesn't stop there if you, if you download it or buy it and you get into it because there's another one that followed it and it's called Batman the Mask of the Phantasm and it's a really, really good one. It's a super good one because it shows Bruce Wayne a hell of a lot more vulnerable than we're used to seeing him. He kind of does the whole Peter Parker thing where he gets obsessed by one perfectly looking lady. He wants to marry her. He wants to quit the business and stop being Batman and all that shit. And nothing goes his way and he still ends up being Batman. And he ends up getting his ass kicked by this, this giant dude in like a ghost suit. And it's, it's a really good one. A really good one. There is a... I can't say enough about these films, though. they're absolutely fantastic. And I might have got them mixed up with the storylines, I might have combined the two films, but suffice to say, I know there's two of them, I've not seen them in years, and they're both real good, so check them out. But, on the subject of Batman enemies, there's a lot in the comics that I don't even know about, because I, like I've mentioned, I don't read the, the Batman comics, I'm probably going to get a bunch of them on an ebook or something, and check them out, because it's so easy to do that these days, as opposed to, you know, buying every issue and shit. 
So I don't know many of the comic book guys. Like, I didn't know who Azrael was. And that dude is fucking awesome, man. I thought it was like Batman from the future. In a red cape with an awesome, like, claw on his right arm. And bat claws on his left arm. And big ass swords and things. And... I was praying that there was a costume or a skin that you could buy off the marketplace to play as that guy, because I think it's gay that they monetize things like skins, I think it's awful and it's exploitative, but that one looks so goddamn awesome, I would buy it in a second. And if you're wondering who I mean, uh, during, there's a side quest in, in Arkham City called The Mysterious Stranger, I think, and it's a guy who's stood around bits, bits of Arkham City that draws these patterns on the floor, and he looks awesome, he's fucking awesome. And I have absolutely no idea who he is or what he is or all that good stuff. And he doesn't really explain himself. He just kind of vanishes after he says some quizzical things about Gotham burning. And you're probably never going to be able to play as him. Which is a big shame because the dude is a boss. And he looks fucking awesome. But there's a lot of villains that they could use that they, they, they haven't really used all that extensively. This game was, was pretty much the... The flagship for Penguin, for Mr. Freeze and for Two-Face. Even though Two-Face is... Interactions were all pretty much to do with Catwoman, which is wasted in my eyes because Catwoman stuff was just diabolically short and, and shit. And it makes you wonder all the other stuff that they, they, they could have gone into because there's a little bit on the Mad Hatter, and I do like the Mad Hatter. The only problem with him is he's very Alice in Wonderland, he's very been there, done that kind of villain, so you can't use him too much. Poison Ivy got a pretty big showcasing in the last game, as did the Joker, obviously. And uh, so did Bane, and Bane is kind of like a side character, but I want to know where fucking Man-Bat is, me. And he's probably the most contrived and easy-to-make villain ever, because he's just Batman spelt wrong. And the dude was literally a bat, a giant bat. And he turned up on the comic all the time, and then caused some serious trouble, because he was an animal, and he was devastating, and he was really strong. And he used to kick Batman's ass like all villains do, until he somehow surpasses them, beats them, and makes them look like idiots. Because we had Clayface, and, and Clayface didn't really do much in the first game, and in this game he does quite a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. But still waiting for Man Bat. Love me some Man Bat. And uh, I was thinking the other day of, of enemies we, we've not really seen. And I, and I couldn't I couldn't place any real ones, because Scarecrow was in the first game, and he had a pretty decent showing. Oh, if you, if you drop off that roof to the right and you get behind the two guys with the stun batons, you can do a double takedown and you won't have to fight them. I fucked it up though, so I have to do this fight on very low life. But if you guys have got any enemies or any villains from the Batman series that you like or that you know of and have not been in an Arkham game before, please feel free to drop a comment and your opinion on it because there's something about this game that seems to make everything look good. And I like that. I mean, I didn't like the original design for Robin, I didn't like the original design for Catwoman, but they both grew on me once I saw them enough. And uh, they just seem to make everything look badass. And that Azrael guy, if you've not seen him, Google him, he's awesome. Guy looks like a beast. Love him to death. But this fight is pretty standard, as per usual. But just keep doing the Batman thing, use your gadgets, choose what you want, and um, it's, it's a pretty simple fight. It can be difficult, though. And once you've done this, it's just going to be some mild traversing to get to the top of the tower. And then once you're at the top of the tower, that will be in another video, and you're going to be taking on a room full of armed guards, which is probably one of the most challenging rooms on the game, because it's not easy to take them out. They've all got guns, they will all shoot you, there's a lot of them. There's not, you know, the general gargoyle set up to, to be exploited. There's a vent I used to use, but there's also a, a walkway at the top that you can use and you can backclaw like a fiend from which I'm going to show you how to do, and the first thing I'm going to say is it's not the fastest way to do it, but it's by far the safest, because you will not get shot too much, and even when you do, you can back up and move to a different position and use that to your advantage. But as I climb this thing, I'm going to talk about a book I've been reading, because I've been meaning to mention it on previous videos, and I haven't, and uh, it needs to be mentioned, because if nobody, if anybody's a, an avid reader and you like these kind of books, you need to check this author out, because the guy's a fucking boss. But the book is called The Affair by a guy called Lee Childs. And Lee Childs used to write for screen in England. He used to write for, for like crime drama shows that, that aired on our TV. And then he moved to America and he became a novelist. And he writes about a character called Jack Reacher, who is pretty much a, a wandering vagrant. He's a guy who spent his entire life in, in the military. And in the early 90s, he was, he was kind of... 
not so much kicked out, but pretty much forced to resign, and he left the military, and instead of, you know, finding a house and settling down, he decided to just wander, and he, wa he, he hitchhikes, he walks along dusty roads, he jumps on, you know, greyhound buses to get to new states, and he never stays longer than a few days, and he just keeps moving around America, and all he carries with him is his toothbrush and um, cash, that's literally it. He takes off the clothes he's wearing and he puts them in the bin and he goes and he buys other clothes and puts them on and that's how he lives. And the guy is, uh, in, the, in, in the army he was a military police major. And if you don't know what the military police are, is they're pretty much the military who investigate the military. Because obviously it's, it's its own thing, it doesn't want outside interference compromising its jurisdiction, so they use the military to do it. So he's kind of like... It's, it's kind of like, you know, the, the top dog detective of the military and when he got kicked out. Not to mention that he's, I think he's 6'4 or 6'6. Six, six. He's, he's 250 pounds. It's all muscle. He's, he's, he's skilled at fighting. He's skilled at everything. He's a womanizer. He's, he's just, he's James Bond who's built like a mixed martial arts fighter. And he gets into bar fights every two minutes. He, he headbutts people. He breaks people's arms. He elbows people. He, he puts himself into crazy situations and somehow manages to get out of them. And he's just wandering around places, and he just finds trouble all the time. And it's the kind of trouble that you really don't want. And on top of that, he pretty much bangs every woman he meets, but he does it intelligently, and by no ways is it patronizing, or is it, you know, misogynistic. He's just a sexy man, and people want a piece of him. And uh, I will be talking a little bit more about this book in the... Well, I didn't even mention what book I'm reading, but I'll talk about it in the next video for people, and I'll just sell him a little bit more because he's fucking awesome. So thanks for watching, guys, and you take care now.